He found himself at war with a nation led by a man whose courage would be forged in fire and steel. President Zelensky. And this after President Putin blamed the West for the war in Ukraine and said he's suspending cooperation in a nuclear treaty while continuing to cozy up to China. America's top diplomats had their hands full. China's Xi and Russia's Putin will meet in coming months. According to the Wall Street Journal, their foreign ministers are meeting tomorrow as the U.S. expresses public concern about China helping Russia's war effort. Fox's Peter Ducey in Warsaw. Britain urging Putin to reconsider his suspension of taking part in the new START treaty, calling it another example of him jeopardizing global security for political gain. Philadelphia's Mayor Jim Kenney urging reform after the killing of a Temple University officer over the weekend. We are fighting an uphill battle, and it doesn't have to be this way. I will continue to call on state lawmakers for sensible gun reforms that will protect our city's residents, including the brave men and women who have taken an oath protect peace. This in a briefing announcing charges against the 18-year-old suspect accused of killing Officer Chris Fitzgerald, who was responding to a robbery report. America is listening to Fox News. Did you know you can get your prescriptions for less at your local pharmacy? You can with GoodRx. It's the free app that can save you money on your medications. Just search for your prescription, choose the pharmacy and the price that works best for you, and then show your GoodRx coupon to your pharmacist at the drop-off counter. GoodRx works at over 70,000 pharmacies, including Walmart, Rite Aid, and Walgreens. And it works whether you have insurance or not. It's easy to save. Next time you drop off your prescription, check GoodRx. To start saving today, go to GoodRx.com. GoodRx is not insurance. Membership fees apply after free trial. Cancel any time. Can I be real for a second? That goal you have to exercise and eat better, you really can do it. But nobody is going to do it for you. And nobody has to, because you can do it if you have the right tools and a community that cares about helping you get results. And that's us, Beachbody. It's as convenient as your TV or laptop, but you need to decide that you're worth it. Let us help you succeed. Here's how. Go to Beachbody.com to claim your free membership and start feeling great. A double overdose in Pennsylvania leads to a drug trafficking indictment against five suspects. Each defendant faces a maximum penalty of 20 years in prison, fine of $1 million, and supervised release from three years to life. And U.S. Attorney David Weiss in Delaware says the suspects are accused of plotting to traffic fentanyl and cocaine across state lines. Both employers and workers giving thumbs up to a shorter work week. After more than 60 companies joined a pilot program testing a four-day work week in the UK, the trial declared a resounding success and 92% of companies are keeping it. Before and after data show nearly 40% of workers felt less stressed, 71% reported less burnout after the six-month trial, and the bottom line, companies actually reported an average 35% revenue increase. The British think tank Autonomy finds that workers preferred the extra day off to getting a pay raise, and 15% said no amount of money would get them to go back to a five-day work week. Therese Prowler, Fox News. Texas billionaire Red McCombs has died, the businessman known for an impact on sports. McCombs owned more than 400 businesses across his lifetime, using his profits to purchase the ABA's Dallas Chaparrales, relocating the team to San Antonio and rebranding them as the Spurs in 1973. Instrumental in the ABA-NBA merger, McCombs would sell his share in the Spurs in 1982, using that money to buy a stake in the NBA's Denver Nuggets. He would sell that share to buy back into the Spurs in 1986. McCombs would sell the Spurs again in 1993. Beyond the hardwood, McCombs was the one-time owner of the NFL's Minnesota Vikings and helped grow Formula One racing in the U.S. with the creation of Circuit of the Americas in Austin, Texas. Fox's Matt Napolitano, Red McCombs, was 95. A short week on Wall Street begins with a sell-off. Right now, the Dow's down 543. I'm Lisa Brady. This is Fox News. Whether your dog is in their puppy, adult, or senior years, there's nothing better than more years together. And the best way to feed their happy, healthy life is with fresh, healthy food. The farmer's dog makes it easy to keep your best friend healthy inside and out with fresh recipes made from real meat and veggies. They're pre-portioned just for your pup and delivered right to your door. Help your dog live a healthy life and get 50% off your first box of real fresh food at thefarmersdog.com slash betteryears23. Hi, I'm Martha Stewart, and I have a question for you. You know that unwelcome guest everyone wishes would just leave already? That's COVID-19. 
That's why I got an updated booster designed to help protect against recent Omicron variants. <laughs> got it? Check eligibility and schedule your updated COVID booster at vaccines.gov. Sponsored by Pfizer and BioNTech. Everywhere USA. It's Fox Across America with Jimmy Fallon. Oh, here we go, here we go. Coming to you live from the greatest country in the world. Broadcasting from the tippy top of the world famous Fox News headquarters in New York City. It is Fox Across America with Jimmy Fallon, a man who is not attacking the Biden administration over the handling of a train wreck in Ohio. And don't get me wrong, I think it's terrible. But the mayor of East Palestine throwing down the gauntlet last night. I'm as bad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore. And check it out. The Biden administration also taking heat for not doing enough from none other than Rosie O'Donnell. There's a slob. There's a real slob. Holy hell. We will clean up the transportation secretary's mess with help from Chadwick Moore. And of course, Democratic strategist Jessica Tarloff going to be here as well. No, God! Nope, she'll be here because as you know, Fox Across America, it is an all-skate. I am not an activist. I am a talk show host. All voices welcome inside the huddle. I don't care where you come from. I don't care what color you are. I don't care how smart you are. I don't care how dumb you are. True story. You can be a Republican on the show. You can be a Democrat. You can be a Libertarian. Just don't be a... That is all. Happy Tuesday, everybody. I began my day uh, five hours ago on Fox and Friends. If you missed it, that hit is on the Fox Across America Facebook page. Uh, tonight, I'll be getting the band back together with our local comedy tour, Fred Gutfeld, at 11 o'clock on the highest rated late night show in America, which happens to happen right here on the Fox News channel. And uh, before I get on the telly with Gutfeld, I will be on with Jesse Waters and Jesse Waters Primetime which is exactly where we begin today, because last night on Jesse Waters Primetime, he had to have the mayor of East Palestine, Ohio, who didn't have a nice word to say about the Biden administration. Uh-oh, I'm in trouble. Now, I love this guy. Okay, Trent Conway. Throwing the challenge away at what he has seen happen to a million other towns like his own. And isn't just going to stand by and take it. Oh! train company's offering us a few bucks so we can stop yelling and screaming they can pull out of town and we can all get weird cancer in five years you know oh the fed said they care you know 12 days after the wreck he's not taking this okay to his credit he went to waters last night he knows i do the show every week he's like there's gonna be eyeballs if they're having that fat community college guy there this is clearly, this is the hill to be on. Uh, but to his credit, he threw down. And uh, I wanted to start there because there is so much, there is so much disdain for how the administration has kind of abandoned the people of East Palestine. At the same time, they're on the other side of the world yelling and screaming about Ukraine and all the things we're going to do to, you know, stop Russia. And yes, Joe Biden, it's very telling that he wrote into Ukraine, according to the White House, Undercover. He rode a train into Ukraine undercover. And it's very telling that he feels safer undercover on a train in a war zone than he would uh, on a train under Pete Booty Judge's leadership of the Transportation Department. It's pretty much been the soundtrack to Mayor Pete's job, uh, his tenure. But here's Trent Conway throwing it down. Clip one. That was the biggest slap in the face. I told you right now he doesn't care about us. Uh, he can send every agency he wants to, but uh, I found that out this morning in one of the briefings that he was in the Ukraine giving billions of dollars away to people over there and not to us. And I'm curious. For President's Day. Our yeah. Country. yeah, President's Day in our country. And he's he's uh, over in Ukraine, so that tells you what kind of guy he is. Think about that. Biden sucks. So, it's President's Day. And President's Day, just so you understood, wasn't designed to celebrate all the presidents. President's Day originated as a holiday. George Washington, our very first president. It occurs on George Washington's birthday. It existed to honor the man 
who put this office on the map and established, you know, a legacy and a, something that gave the rest of us a reverence for the position and the leadership it required and the selflessness it required. But it's very telling that George Washington left office in his closing speech to the country warning us to avoid entanglements over in Europe. Hey, we got a thriving, prosperous thing here. Let's not become the world's police department. Get torn into, you know, eight different conflicts that affect us from a trade standpoint, from an economic standpoint, from a domestic security standpoint. Let's focus on America. America first. Remember America first? That was a thing. Okay, and they didn't call George Washington a white nationalist or a sellout. They called him you know, the father of our country. Okay, which I know you'd have to say the birthing parent of our country now. I don't want to get you, get you upset. But the point is, on President's Day, which was only called President's Day because people wanted to sell cars and that cars and mattresses at a discount on a Monday in late February. But the point being, it's, it's known as a day that salutes American leadership. American leadership is not flying over a train wreck in East Palestine, Ohio, on a way to hand another briefcase full of money to the Ukrainians, American leadership is making sure everything's under control under your watch, which is something Joe Biden is not doing. Okay? Here is East Palestine resident Oliver Kuchner flat out saying they can't use their tap water, the baby formula, because there's a chemical smell coming out of it. Nobody in their right mind is going to give it to their kid. Do you understand on a day when American babies having to go through logistical hurdles to get baby food on a day when kids are having a hard time trusting that the fields are safe to play in, that the waters are safe to fish in. We've got Biden telling them to talk to the hand because he's over giving bro hugs to Zelensky. People here have a right to feel slighted. Here it is, the two. Yes, it's very concerning that, you know, we are unable to use the tap water, the water in our own house to make baby formula and, you know, feed our child. The smell is still lingering. You catch it in bits. Um, we haven't really been explained to what it is or any sort of side effects. It's still being left more or less in the body. So there you go. It feels like they're not getting an adequate response from this administration. And to be clear, are they getting an adequate response? The answer would be no. Okay. Pete Booty Judge, to his credit, finally waited on this. It took him 12 days to tweet about it. And then what did he say this week? Excuse me, last week he said, Wow, you know, it's bad and we're monitoring it. But we have thousands of train wrecks every year. That's what, what goes on. So, I mean, understand. What, shut up! Will you shut up? Just do it. Who told him? <laughs> like, which strategist was like, No, go with the, you know, there's other train wreck strategy. That'll take the edge off. Don't worry. I know their eyes are burning. I know the babies can't have formula. But just tell them they're not the only ones going through this. They'll feel some strength in numbers. That's what they went with. It's insanity is what it is. But here is Pete Buttigieg saying he's going to go there eventually, but not for a photo op. It's because he you know, wants to get to know the people. It's been six. Well, I am planning to go, and uh, our folks were on the ground from the first hours. I do want to stress that the NTSB needs to be able to do its work independently. But when I go, the focus is going to be on action. Look, I was mayor of my hometown for eight years. We dealt with a lot of disasters, natural and human. And one of the things I noticed very quickly is that there's two kinds of people who show up when you have that kind of disaster experience. People who are there because they have a specific job to do and are there to get something done. And people who are there to look good and have their picture taken. When I go, it will be about action on rail safety, like the actions that we're calling on Congress to help us with, that we're calling on industry to take, and that we are undertaking ourselves as a department to help make sure that these kinds of things don't happen in the future. You are a sad, strange little man. So, I'm going to go. Don't get me wrong. I'll be there for action. What does that mean? That means he's going to show up there in a month and pass some type of bill or propose some type of legislation with a name that makes you think it has to do with rail safety, but will ultimately prioritize what? Some type of climate change initiative for all of the trains and the emissions they cause, and some type of diversity inclusion for the construction workers, rebuilding the infrastructure, and cleaning up the site. This is ridiculous. Okay, they don't do anything that they can't tie their narrative to, they can't tie their agenda to. One of the main reasons they haven't wanted to go there is 
because every time a tractor trailer flips over or a train pulling hazardous goods to rails, a stronger case is made for pipelines. Point. Point. I keep making this point relentlessly because you've never heard of a pipeline overturning. Okay, never, never. Well, the, you know, three lanes are closed on the freeway today. We had a pipeline overturn. You know, you can't get tap water in your hometown. We had a pipeline over. It never happens. Okay, but they're going against pipelines because they want you to think they're bad for, envi for the environment. I'll tell you what's bad for the environment. Releasing tons of noxious chemicals into the sky, poisoning the water, killing fish on contact, chickens falling over and dropping dead, kids not being able to get baby formula out of the tap because nobody trusts the drinking water. I promise you, it's really bad for the environment. And I'm not the only chubby person taking this position. Okay, here's Rosie O'Donnell. She went on TikTok last night. Uh, and to her credit, she called out the inaction from the government. It's clip eight. They poisoned hundreds of thousands of people. Their lives ruined. Ruined. They say, well, if I was someone, I heard a reporter say, if I was there, I'd pack up my kids and go. Well, you know what? Not everyone can do that. They don't have anywhere else to go. People are living month to month, week to week. They don't have stored up reserves to go stay in a hotel for two, three months, a year. Fact is, they're going to have to leave that town. And, you know, the water supply, it goes to so many states. This is like a tragedy of epic proportion. And it's criminal negligence by that chemical and train company. And nothing's being done about it. Now, to be clear, she drew a distinction between the rail car and the horse that was made a liability here. And was careful not to call out any duty judge. The guy who did the transportation center, Jerry Ford, saying this whole entire thing, says, yeah, I'll show up with these legislation committees. You know, actually being on the ground, expressing concern, trying to rally the troops. You know, one of the reasons oh, wow. we send politicians into disaster areas, like Donald Trump is going to these houses, is because you're trying Okay, to give them the reassuring feeling that someone in government is in fact paying attention. You know, the whole, I feel your pain, that whole thing? That's one of the reasons you want somebody on the site, somebody who can bring attention to the story, keep the heat on the transportation company. But in this instance, Pete Buttigieg doesn't want to bring any more attention to the ineptitude of his mission than he already has. Pete Booty Judge is pathetic. But that's why he won't go. It's one, because it you know, feels like he's playing the news cycle into the Republican narrative, which is that this guy screws up everything he touches, which is true. And he doesn't want to highlight any more than he already has. Okay, but two is also the pipeline issue. Okay, the more the trains fly off the tracks, the more you realize we never should have been canceling pipelines in the first place. But that's why we are where we are. And when people can't get baby formula, when people don't feel safe in their homes, when the rainbow is now, you know, a lake where fish are just floating dead, okay, and you've got the president on the other side of the world handing out Venmos, you know the whole save a horse, ride a cowboy, I walk into the room handing out $100 bills? That's Biden in Ukraine. Save a horse, ride a Sherman tank. I walk into the room handing out billion dollar bills. That's Biden. While back home in America, the people, okay, who actually need our government the most are getting the middle finger. Welcome to the Biden administration. Home to the new slogan, America last. Jimmy Fallon. Nice kid, but a little dumb. You're listening to Fox Across America with Jimmy Fallon. is in their puppy, adult, or senior years, there's nothing better than more years together. And the best way to feed their happy, healthy life is with fresh, healthy food. The farmer's dog makes it easy to keep your best friend healthy inside and out with fresh recipes made from real meat and veggies. They're pre-portioned just for your pup and delivered right to your door. Help your dog live a healthy life and get 50% off your first box of real fresh food at thefarmersdog.com slash betteryears23. Hi, I'm Martha Stewart, and I have a question for you. You know that unwelcome guest everyone wishes would just leave already? That's COVID-19. 
That's why I got an updated booster designed to help protect against recent Omicron variants. Got it? Check eligibility and schedule your updated 